I thank you, Paul. I want to thank everyone for being here. Um, after the Temple game, you know, going into to the Northern Illinois game, we challenged our football team. And uh, what I saw was a team that would fight and uh, compete uh, for four quarters. And, uh, you know, I think when you really look at uh, what happened in that game, it's pretty evident that uh, we were not able to capitalize on some critical uh, special teams plays and then turnovers. And typically when you give up the ball five times, uh, the end result's not a 31 to 30 uh, final score. You know, typically it's a much wider margin. And then you know, I could have been more proud the way our kids uh, were able to fight. Um, and it showed me that there was players and, and this gentleman sitting next to me um, recognizes this, but they're, they're making up for some other guy's mistakes. And that's what happened on Saturday. And, you know, really when we look at uh, uh, the film and watching Chaz uh, being named the Mac East Offensive Player of the Week, uh, his numbers were outstanding. You know, our entire offense uh, did some incredible things uh, through that fourth quarter that really showed a lot uh, from our kids. And, you know, Chaz was uh, 35 of 52, you know, had 404 yards of passing, plus adding 56 yards rushing. And a guy had 460 total yards of offense and four touchdowns. But the play, I think, that really defines what this young man's all about was on that fourth and four play. You know, where we are. And we're down 31 to 10. And we're just, you know, uh, you know we're all trying to find a way. And uh, this young man found a way. He spun out to his backside and uh, throws a left-handed pass. And Eddie Young does a great job coming back. And, and that really got us, uh, sparked us on the sidelines. And you know, we all kind of chuckled because I knew right then and then that moment would define uh, one thing about Chaz is he's a great competitor, deep, passionate young man. Uh, now we must move on to Miami, Ohio. And this Saturday is a, another critical game on the road against another Mac East divisional opponent. And uh, we know they're a good football team. They're the reigning Mac champs. And uh, we got to do our part this week to get ready and bounce back after uh, a tough one-point loss. Chad, you want to start by uh, taking us through that play and, and what you're thinking and when you have the instinct to switch hands like that? No, I don't think it was an instinct. It was um, I knew it was fourth down, so you can't take a sack. Um, you can't throw the ball out of bounds. So I just did my best to keep the ball in play, and Ed made a great play. That much? No. I did it in high school a couple of times, but I'm just, you know, at the end of the day, you want to try to make plays. So. Is that that the rhythm that you were in, especially you, especially with the offense as a whole in that fourth quarter, is that as good as you have felt running this offense? Is that what you feel like this offense can be at, at, its, at its peak, the way you guys were moving in the fourth quarter? Yeah, I don't think it's about what it can be. I think that's what it is. I think uh, Coach Quinn and Coach Wood do an outstanding job of putting us in a position to make plays. And what we did in the fourth quarter that we haven't done consistently throughout the year is make those plays. And uh, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to, your best players making plays. And uh, we want to continue to do that moving forward throughout the season. When you looked at how that worked, Chad, in, uh, over, over the span of an entire game, I mean, we saw it in the second half, Ball State, you know, great offense in the second half, great offense in the fourth quarter there. What's the, what, what does it take now to, to consistency. get that over a full? Yeah, execution and consistency out of uh, the quarterback. Um, it also takes 11 guys understanding their role. Um, and I think it also takes protecting the football, giving yourself the most opportunities with the ball to make plays you got to make plays. Your, your best players have to make plays in order for you to win football games. Well, that's an excruciating ending on Saturday, but there's so many positives, you know, especially throughout that fourth quarter where the numbers were just um, amazing. How do you take that and move forward with it? But, you know, what did they find? Yeah, well, I think our defense played phenomenal. I mean, where the offense was making mistakes, the defense was picking them up by playing great defense. I mean, we had our opportunities. We ran 95 plays. 95. So we got our opportunities. Um, and so moving forward, we want to continue to do a great job of protecting the football. This was the first game that I think that we had multiple turnovers um, from an offensive standpoint. And we want to protect the ball and we want to make plays. So how, is, how do you put that behind you and, and look at, you know, in the context of the season, you know, and, that, and taking that loss and now moving forward, you know, if you went out, you're fine. Huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm a senior. I got four games left and my career is done. Uh, so for me, it's getting another opportunity, um, a minimal amount of opportunities to play football. 
and I'm hoping that it rubs off as I continue to prepare each and every week like it's my last week. So, Jeff, the, the contrast in the two, the last two losses are, are at the opposite ends. Um, have you noticed the difference? Have you noticed the different kind of reaction? Obviously, your team reacted well to the bad loss at Temple to come back and play well against Northern Illinois. Can you give us some gauge of, of where you think your team is because of two such dramatic you know, game enders like that? Well, I think what I what we pointed out is what we saw on film. And, you know, I, I know our players uh, get in there and they evaluate the film just like we do. And uh, there was a lot of things that I think our kids uh, owned up to in terms of the accountability. It's accountability on everyone's part. And now what we have to do is be able to recognize, you know, effort and talent gets you started, but it's still about executing the base fundamentals of the game. Um, and that's been the case uh, forever and ever. You know, we know that it's about blocking and tackling and kicking and catching and throwing and, you know, and that's what we got to go back into doing today is having an intense Tuesday um, and getting our edge back again, you know, and get cranked back up to, to play this game on Saturday because it's going to require everything we have. And, you know, we've been relatively healthy. You know, I feel good about that. We've been able to uh, uh, respond as I've challenged these young men and as I keep telling them, look, you know, we want to play as hard as we can, as long as we can, can for four quarters and let the end result uh, take care of itself. And that's really what I want them to fo focus in on is that mental aspect, that concentration, uh, getting and watching more film and studying. And, uh, and certainly, as Chess says, there's a sense of urgency with the senior class. They get four more games left. And now comes your chance uh, to go on the road and prove that, uh, you know, you can put it together for four quarters every single player. Jeff, is it either or at, at place picker now on the, on the depth chart? What is, what is that? Well, that's to give our kids a chance to uh, compete, both of them, both Pete and and Pat. And, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, that's certainly the way we want to go about uh, handling our depth and who's the starter. You're either a starter, key backup starter, or a, a demo, scout team guy. And all three positions are important. But, you know, when uh, we have to we have to look at the big picture, we got to look at the team I do. And, uh, and I certainly need to put our very best uh, players out there. And I think Pete and Pat will have an opportunity to prove that again this week. We've crafted up some different things that I want to do uh, to put them in different situations uh, to allow them to uh, respond. And I want to see Pete bounce back. I really do. Excuse me. Uh, because I think it's important for him. I think it's important for our team uh, to see him come back. And I think we're going to be able to, uh, to address that situation a little bit uh, closer towards game time as we get through this week. When we look at two, I mean, Colby, you do a lot of rotating on the defensive line, obviously, but, but Colby weighs elevation to the, to the starting spot on the depth chart. Is, is, that, you, is that reward or is that? Oh, well, that's long? certainly, uh, that's evaluating the best player and putting the best player out there. And it's not that Gordon isn't. Uh, Gordon's done an outstanding job for us, and we get, we get all those guys in there, as you said. So, you know, but, you know, somebody's going to take the first snap. And uh, right now we feel Kobe, uh, you know, in terms of defending the run and, and being able to be in, uh, you know, in terms of good pass uh, rush mode and, you know, being disciplined with his assignments and, and making plays in critical times, uh, he's really stepped up his play. And we're going to count on all these guys to step in and, and play. But uh, Kobe's really, uh, he's emerged, and that's really a good sign for us. And where's your confidence level with Hughes as a, as a punt returner? I mean, obviously the way things were going Saturday was just – catch it and calm things down, but is, it, is he under wraps as a, as a punt returner? No, he's, you know, he's, he had, he was the guy that went in for uh, Terrell on uh, two Saturdays ago against Temple. So, you know, I fully expect, uh, you know, Devin to have a good week of practice. And matter of fact, he just walked right by the hallway as we were walking in here. And uh, every moment's a teaching moment. And I took a minute just to, uh, to grab him and let him know, you know, exactly what this week is all about for him and what it means to this team. And, you know, certainly he was excited about uh, hearing about what, you know, what we're going to expect from him. And, having a good day today and, and move through the week of practice and get in, watch more film, and, and go perform because he's fully capable of doing that. And I fully anticipate him uh, filling in that role and responsibility of being our punt returner. Chaz, anything uh, special for you going back to the Cincinnati area, back to Ohio? Is this, uh, is this uh, you know, a little more special week for you because of that? Yeah, it is. Um, I'm really excited to, to be close to home. I got a bunch of family coming. Um, so for me, it's kind of like a home game, so I'm excited. Away is it from? It's about an hour and ten minutes. And, and do you have some 
relationships with some because they're so close to Cincinnati. I know they have a lot of Cincinnati guys on their team. Are there some relationships with guys that you know on the Miami team or you cross paths with? Or? Most of them have graduated, but there is um, there's a receiver by the name of Chris Givens. I played against him in high school. He's a good guy. Um, so there are some relationships that are still there. So I'm excited to play. How many people do you think? How many tickets do you got to come up with? <laughs> Hopefully 50 would be good. Um, that'd be good, yeah. So we'll see. So you're cutting the as long as my mom's there, I'm, I'm happy. So we're good. Jeff, how's Steven Means? What is the situation? Anybody else that might be? Right. Uh, yeah, Steven is, uh, you know, he's a little sore, a little banged up. Uh, but, you know, I fully anticipate uh, right now Steven to, uh, you know, have a, you know, a solid week of uh, recovery and, and be ready to, to play for us on Saturday. Uh, but you know, it's just a it's just a day by day situation. Just to see how he he was responding quite well yesterday, moving around. He just said he was a little sore, and he said fully count on me getting in there and playing Saturday, Coach. I may need an extra day or two this week just to kind of so I'm not contacting him and banging him around a little bit. Just give that uh, uh, you know his back a chance to to, to uh, you know quiet down. But outside of that, we've been very very. Uh, you know, relatively healthy. You know, we, we you know, Terrell's the only one. Uh, we thought maybe something maybe with Steven, but he's going to be okay. And outside of that, everyone else is ready to go. Can you guys talk a little bit about what you see in Miami? Well, the, you know, offensively, you'll see that uh, they, they've really placed a lot of uh, uh, focus on their quarterback, uh, Zach Dysert, number four. He's a, a really solid uh, quarterback. He's got a great receiver in Harwell, Nick Harwell, number eight, you know, and they've and have, they've combined with, the, I think, over 44 catches. And, you know, and Zach's, a, you know, he's got a good arm. He throws some, some nice tight uh, throws and some tight windows, and, you know, and he can escape. You know, the one thing about Zach compared to uh, maybe this week where Chandler was going to you know, beat you downfield with his legs, you know, Zach's going to try to beat you with his eyes downfield by still keeping the play alive. And he can move around in the pocket, and he'll get the ball downfield. Uh, from that standpoint, uh, you know, defensively, you know, another solid, uh, you know, four-three defense. Uh, they play a little bit tighter coverage uh, than than maybe some of the zone teams that we face. But you know, they they try to uh, they try to put an extra hat in the box and and keep the running game into you know uh, keep it at check and bounce and you know and certainly they're good tacklers and they pursue well to the ball. So uh, it's going to be a great challenge for our kids offensively and defensively. And then certainly our special teams got to bounce back. Big time this week, and we're going to demand it from our kids. Jess, can you talk a little bit about how the tighter coverage plays in the offense and what you're looking for? It plays into what I talked about earlier, and that your players have to make plays. And so, when anytime you go man to man coverage, you're asking uh, your players to make plays. And so, I'm hoping that we take that mindset into practice that wait a minute, we're going to get some man to man coverage. It's time to prepare to make plays. Um, particularly this past game, but even a little more as the season has gone on, Brandon out of the backfield as a receiving threat. Can you talk about what that gives you, and is there has there been a, a significant emphasis on trying to get him the ball more you know, in his hands in some space like that? Yeah, well, the job of a quarterback is to get the ball to his playmakers, um, and Bo is definitely one of those guys. And so I've been very fortunate to be able to dump it down to him and him take it 13, 15, 27 touchdowns. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good – Aspect to be able to throw the ball to your running back, knowing that he's going to get a ton of yards. 